going to build a banquet bench. Now, the reason I've decided to build a banquet bench is because I need more space in here to fit a dining room table and fit some chairs. And this narrow space here will not accommodate chairs on both sides, so a banquet bench is a perfect solution for this small space. Here's what I was dealing with before. A really narrow space with a tiny bench and a small table, blocked by a door frame. And spoiler alert, here's the after picture. Now obviously we had to do a lot more than just build a bench, but that part I'll save for another video. I cheated a little bit and I started this project before the cameras were rolling. Uh, and the reason is because I wanted to test out the um, uh, concept of putting a drawer between, between the frame pieces. And as you can see, it works really well. This is going to be my kind of hidden storage drawer that holds my modem and my router. Um, but you can do that with this basic plan. So the, the concept is that I'm gonna make, I'm gonna make four, depending on how long your bench is gonna be, you, you can adjust it. But I'm making four of these frame pieces. In between the frame pieces, if you wanna put drawers, you can do that. If you don't, you don't have to. So I'm attaching them directly to the wall. Part of the reason I'm doing that is because my wall is not completely flat. So I couldn't attach a two by four here or there was a lot of gapping. Um, if you live in an old house like I do, uh, you can probably sympathize with this problem. So let's go ahead and get to work making the other two frame pieces. And I will show you here and here how I attach them to the wall. So I have my cuts are um, 20 inches, one, and then I have two that are 14 and three quarters. And I have one that is 14 and a quarter. And what I'm going to come out with is um, this framing piece, which is 16 and a quarter tall by 20 long or wide. Did you call that long or wide? I don't know. By um, 17 and a half in the bottom. The reason I'm making it this size is because um, a typical chair is about um, 18 inches more or less tall. So by making the 16th and a fourth, it gives me some space to put. Uh, three fourths inch plywood and then to upholster it. So that'll give me hmm, probably like two and a half, three inches with foam and there'll be some give. Um, so that's my plan. You can adjust this to whatever you want to do. determining the length of our bench by where the studs are placed in the wall. I'm going to custom make the cushion so I'm not worried about um, buying a pre-made cushion. Think about that before you build your bench though because if you're going to buy a pre-made cushion you probably want to check standard sizes and make your bench to that. But like I said um, we're attaching these directly to the studs so they are a little more secure. So um, I've got a stud here, a stud there, and I'm going to show you how we are going to attach it. Like I said, my wall is not flat, so the point where this board hits the wall is where I'm gonna focus on um, driving my screws. Okay, our frame is ready. Um, the next step is going to be to put our um, birch cabinet grade plywood on the front of this and then we're going to trim it and I'll decide in the moment how I'm going to do the bench. Do you like this bench? You do? Okay, we can put it back. Okay. Cool. Stay okay, just like that. Alright, I'm excited to trim this. Now we're going to attach this one by two across the face of all of these and that is going to hold everything together. It's also going to provide a little extra support um, for the, uh, the seat and it's also going to extend the seat out just a little bit. The overhang on the top was intentional. It makes for a much more comfortable seating experience. You can do this a few different ways. You can make it angled, uh, but I do recommend not just making a square box for the bottom.
we're in day two and we're going to finish this bench and we're starting with um, the back. So we're going to attach a three-fourths inch piece of birch plywood to the back and in order to do that uh, I'm going to start by attaching a two by four. This is kind of like a terribly warped piece of wood by straight lumber. We didn't, but and this is just going to be. It's going to serve two purposes. One, it's kind of a spacer because um, I'm going to have the back at an angle, and two, it's something for us to screw the plywood into. <laughs> Also adding a 1x2 to the top for the same purpose, being really careful to level it and to align the sides with the bench. And then we use screws to attach the back to both of the supports. We used a countersink bit so that we can hide the screws in the finishing stage. That would be nice when there's a cushion there. Yeah. It's just gonna be a cushion in here. Yeah. We're gonna leave it like this. No cushion, you just have to balance. It's right there in the middle. That's good. <laughs> just picture yourself with a beer and a two by four right in the middle of your butt. All right, let's put in some more screws. All right, let's do it. Time to trim the lip of our bench seat part. Uh, with some half inch plywood that we ripped. So my plan here, um, this is three and a quarter inch. What it's gonna do is it's gonna hang down enough that you're not gonna see any of this stuff under here, so that's gonna help hide things. But it's also gonna stick up an inch all the way around. And the reason it's gonna do that is it's going to frame in the upholstered seat so we can drop the seat in and there'll be like a little one inch frame all around the edge. So. Um, Let's see how this works. The beauty of this design is that it allows the seat to sit really securely inside the frame without needing screws. That way I can lift up the cushion and store things in the bench if I want to. It's important to spend a lot of time trimming out the rest of the bench because this is what's going to make your final product look really great. You'll need a circular saw, a table saw, and plenty of half inch plywood to cover the whole bench. Don't worry about nail holes or seams. You're going to use wood filler on everything before you sand. Do pay attention to any exposed plywood edge and apply edge banding. Even if you paint, I recommend edge banding all of the plywood edges that are going to show. Edge banding is just a way to take plywood and make it look like what's all a piece of wood. It kind of finishes it. So uh, first thing you're going to want to do is get your iron hot. Well, no. First thing, cover it in foil so you don't ruin it. And then um, get it hot. There is glue on this. And so the iron just kind of like activates the glue. Immediately apply pressure. Now I got this fancy little tool that is going to like cut off the excess stuff. Not beautiful. It's not beautiful. Yeah. Okay, so I figured it out. You kind of just run it back and forth a little bit, and that sort of cleans it up. So don't worry for the first couple passes where it's like really not good. Um, yeah, it just sort of gets better the more you pass over it. So that's pretty good now. That doesn't look terrible. It's not like, you know, it's not solid wood, right? So, yeah. And once your trim is done, you're gonna add wood filler to all of the holes in the seams, and then you're gonna sand it and sand it again, and then you're ready to paint. I am very close to having this project done. My last step is to cover this piece of plywood with foam and then fabric. And this is going to make the seat, which is the last part of the bench that we have to finish. Um, so I went to the fabric store and I've clearly been to too many hardware stores in my life because I asked them to cut it for me 16 by 83 and they told me they don't do that. So um, what they did tell me is I could use something serrated. So I'm gonna use a saw 
um, to cut through this. So I heard that you want to do like swiping passes. You don't want to like go back and forth. So that's what I'm going to try to do. The foam's cut and it is ready to attach to the board. So before I put the batting on, I'm going to use some Elmer spray adhesive and I'm going to cover the plywood with spray adhesive and then I'm going to attach the, um, the foam. Probably don't want to do this on your living room carpet, but. dry for a little bit and then I'll attach the batting. It's the same process to attach the batting and the fabric so I'm just going to show you how I attach the batting. You want to make sure that you pull it pretty tight and that you put plenty of staples in. If you make a mistake it's not a problem you can always pull out the staples and start over again. When you get to the end here you're going to want to kind of trim some of this out so that it's not too thick. So I'm actually going to trim this out and then trim this out here too. And you just kind of do that to both sides so that when you actually fold this in, it, it doesn't, it's not like too much. And here it is with the fabric attached and placed in the frame. I added drawer hardware and put some cord around around the bottom of the bench and it turned out pretty good. Thanks for watching. This has been Laura from The Unprofessional. To see written instructions for this project and other DIY projects, visit my website, theunprofessional.com. And if you like this video, please don't forget to click the like button and subscribe.